this is a bit of a different format from usual. Um, I don't actually have much to do in this video. I thought it was time for an update on where I am. Um, so obviously this weekend I'm looking to do a live stream because it's coming up to one year since I started the channel and I figured it'd be worth having a bit of a Q&A, give people the opportunity to uh, give me a grilling on my lack of progress and anything else they want to know about the boat. Um, what else? What's happened in the interim? So we went racing this weekend. Um, it's not my intent to like absolutely hammer the boat whilst trying to restore it, but I don't like to waste opportunities to go out, largely because when we do go out, we find more things that need repairing or fixing and uh, obviously everyone wants to go sailing anyway, right? Uh, the race was interesting. I appreciate not everyone's into racing, so I may insert a brief summary here. Or I may not. Okay, I promise I'll keep this mega brief. Okay, so what happened first is we had a bit of a cock up on the start line. So basically there's two classes of boat that race. Class one that start five minutes before us and us, which is class two. I'm very much at the back of class two. On the class one start, I was still doing a practice run on the start line and I basically stalled out on the start line right in the middle of their start. Lots of shouting, very embarrassing, very silly. When I did finally start, I started <laughs> very late, and this is the view I had. We came up to the first mark. We'd managed to catch that up to two or three boats, I think, by this point. And then rounding the first mark, it was actually quite close. There's a boat just on our inside and a boat just on our outside that's gone past. So, uh, yeah, at least we caught back up with the pack. Uh, the Spinnaker goes up uh, after <laughs> a very long setup time. But hey, Spinnaker. So that was a nice run. The spinnaker came back down, which in itself wasn't too eventful, um, considering we're double-handed. Uh, that went down okay, but then when we rounded that mark, there were lots of rocks. It was a bit of a pain in the ass. I got hit in the head by the main sheet, and uh, we had to tack several times to stop being on the rocks. We went back upwind. We made reasonable pace, but the boat didn't point very well. I think our four stay is too loose. There's no turnbuckle in it to tighten it. Hence, that's another job on the list. All in all, fairly terrible race. Double-handed. It was always going to be a mess. We haven't raced in about four months. Uh, yeah, and a terrible result to boot. Uh, so what happened last week when we went out with Dan was uh, Josh accidentally kicked the ignition barrel of the engine uh, and snapped the nose off it which was quite interesting so uh, yeah we almost had to do a bit of a hot wiring job but luckily I was able to get just about enough of the key still into the barrel to work it but Josh kindly bought me a new one so I'm going to be changing that at some point. Um, I've been doing a bit of works to the electrics um, obviously the main feeling is the whole boat needs stripping back and redoing in terms of electrics and so I'm kind of walking this halfway house line at the moment where I'm making sure that it is good enough, i.e. the radio works, the lights work, you know, the important kind of safety stuff works. Um, and so I was looking the other day at like buying a new switch panel slash fuse box and I was like, why would I spend any money on this because I really want to do a brand new system. So I ended up literally just buying, uh, yeah, one of these, like a spare little fuse holder because that's what's failed on the one there and actually when you open it up the wiring is quite neat it's just kind of weirdly well, I'll put some images here it's kind of covered in this weird grease and what I found when I was working on it is um, there weren't actually that many breaks in the circuit there are two of those fuse holders that are broken but the other two or three that were giving issues um, it was actually kind of like a liquid it's like a brownie water like liquefied grease almost behind the fuse and I took that out cleaned up the fuse holder cleaned up the fuses put it all back in it all worked fine so uh, perhaps when I had it out last year and it was out for all of summer maybe it got too warm in here and the grease ran down the cables I have no idea but either way it needs some attention um what else what else has happened oh yeah um so traveler Obviously the Traveller has, has been an issue. 
Okay, one of the jobs I need to do is fix the traveler on this boat. Um, we've had several issues of it. It's been very kind of sticky and gritty and hasn't run very smoothly, um, which causes issues when you're trying to depower rapidly, like when a gust hits you. Um, and we've had the opposite issue where when we've been jibing, uh, it's actually let go off one of the cam cleats and gone flying across the traveler uh, making the boom crash across across the, um, the cockpit which hasn't been ideal um, so yeah we've we've kind of stort, sorted the sticky issue out by um, just lubing lubing the car up on the track and it's better but you could do if taking the whole track off or, or at least giving a bit more effort to giving it a clean I think but that's one thing he's doing and the other element is these lines that lock it in place that run through these cam cleats and these blocks uh, as you can see here that it's a double braid line and the outside cover is completely disappeared so when we run the traveler down this way uh, this broken bit of cover gets jammed in the block and it causes all sorts of issues so I've got some new line 7 mil which was quite difficult to find um, I could find it with a Dyneema core but being a traveler um, I don't really want a Dyneema core I want it to be polyester and have a little bit of give so that um, when when we jibe for example or whenever it's in, under any kind of impact load there's a little bit of give in the traveler it just takes the shock loading out of the whole system so yeah managed to find double braid so what i'm going to do is just check it actually runs through these blocks and then i'm gonna take one of these home and uh splice it um it's just a i don't know even know what you call this just an eye splice and that's it really so yeah how difficult can it be for those that have been following so um i bought some seven mil double braid lines which were semi difficult to find and uh yeah i did a couple of eye splices with um the very generous help of a guy called savvy sailor remy in guernsey he runs his own um Kind of rigging company and uh yeah he gave me some advice and it was very good and with a couple of tools i was able to make these little eye splices so these are going to be replacing the travel alliance um what else what else has happened oh yeah i brought a multimeter i bought my own multimeter ow that is inconvenient if you're actually sat here anyway you get used to it i guess um yeah, bought my multimeter, cheap Amazon job. I bought a set of test leads to give me a few more options for kind of extending around the boat and for kind of prodding into specific cables and things. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I'd, for those of you that are interested in the 3D scan I did on the winch bracket uh, for the main halyards, uh, I used one of these. It's a Revo Point 3D scanner. They are reasonably pricey unless you've you've got a kind of valid use case for them. I, I say reasonably pricey, they're kind of low to mid hundreds. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd like to actually complete a full scan of the boat at some point, just because I'm a geek and it interests me. But uh, yeah, if anyone's interested in that, feel free to ping me some questions. Uh, what else is happening? Um, not a lot really. I've got like a ton of electrical peripherals and things building up on the boat um, ready to start fixing things up and yeah as per usual I need to do the water fixes stop the, the rain ingress uh, the problem is at the moment the boat is just an absolute state it's difficult even to get into the fore cabin so yeah that job really needs to wait until we get good enough weather that I can take everything out of the boat and then really clamber into some, some corners and lockers and find all the leaks and, and seal them up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, got a live stream coming up. I wouldn't say I'm anxious about it, but obviously it's my first one. And, uh, yeah, I, I barely know the technical aspects of how to do it. I assume I need a laptop so I can read comments as I'm going and obviously a camera. 
Um, but yeah, who knows if anyone will turn up. Might just be me, <laughs> just waiting in an empty room. Uh, if I get if I get two or three people turn up, I will be happy. And uh, yeah, I'll bring some tea down, maybe some beers, and see how long it goes on for. But uh, hopefully, see a few of you there. Adios. Uh, I'm covered in baby food.